Hey! hey. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Good morning and welcome morning. to another session of Awaken Your Relationships. I am Julie Murphy and I have written a book called Awaken Your Wealth. Um, I'm the money chick, but I have come to the conclusion after almost 30 years of doing this that money shows up as a result of uh, other things that are going on in your life, from your health to your relationships to are you living from a place of passion and purpose? And so today, Rita is our relationship expert. And uh, we started this awakening series because it's time for us all to live a life that we love and that we dream of, regardless of anything that's going on in the macro environment, because God knows there's a ton of it going on these days. And uh, so Rita, tell everybody about yourself. Well, for the last 14 years, I've been helping women um, really figure out their past trauma because it kept showing up in their body. It kept showing up in their relationships. And I did it through um, touch and body work and, and Asian medicine predominantly and shamanism. And as the world has gotten more stressed out and more crazy, you know, I really recognized that I, I had to take all the things that I knew about how the body works, about how we manage our stress, about how we grow. I used to be a kindergarten teacher, so I've always been thinking about how we grow. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I got one you, of those homeschooling today, so if you feel like you need something else to do today. <laughs> no. Oh, no. That was like a former life. That's what I was going to do from age four to uh, after my first actual kindergarten teaching job. <laughs> Once I had that, I said, oh, no, this is a yeah. bad idea. But, um, but I've turned it into where I help women who feel stuck in narcissistic and toxic relationships, either um, with someone that they're, they're ready to get divorced from after decades, or with someone who's ready to start a new relationship with someone who's exciting and new and, and isn't you know, flatlining. I, I've got a friend of mine who's in her seventies and she's been trying to date and it's oh, just God, you know, like, Oh, Oh my God. Are you kidding me? Because there aren't, you know, vibrant, interesting people that she's meeting that makes her feel alive. Right. So, um, and those people tend to be a little bit more narcissistic. The mm -hmm. interesting ones. Really that interesting is a good point. Ones. And so if you don't know how to handle a narcissist, if you don't know how to handle um, your own emotions, that uh, someone who's more exciting, but possibly more narcissistic can bring up, uh, then you're going to have the same kind of destructive relationship. But if you learn how to manage it, then um, you can turn it into something that's powerful and a soulmate relationship and, and something that takes you to a higher level. And I help women do that, either stand strong and, and get a support system and and figure out how they work so they can leave mm -hmm. or start something new in their life, birth something new, right. um, try again, and this time do it right. Well, and, and as you've reminded me over and over again, is that you're not the same person, you know, after, after you've had an experience of a relationship that was not something that was soul feeding for you, that it became that you were in all of your projections and in all of your trauma states from what happened in your childhood that um, you show up differently because yeah. you're, you're, you're more aware, you're more conscious, you've had more experience. And, mm -hmm. um, and, I, I, and I know that was true for me too. Like, what do I, you know, I don't want to repeat patterns, you know, because there are parts that I recognize going, yeah, I'm not going down that path again. And we were talking earlier about how when it actually starts to become what it is that you desire, that um you have to be okay with it being okay yes yeah like it's a way we, were, we were talking about our physical environment at the time but that that's also true in our relationships right it's like mm -hmm. that it's almost more normal for it to feel screwed up on some level than it actually is for it to be all together yeah 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 we're used to reacting to things i mean this is something that I go through with the, in my own personal relationships and with the women I have in my life, um, you know, my clients and things is this idea that we're, we, um, our bodies are reacting to our past trauma so strongly 
that we're constantly not letting people finish sentences or not letting thoughts unfold because um, because we're reacting and we're trying to feel better and now we have to do something about this and our brain's all over the place. And we think that reacting and defending ourselves and fighting back and punching someone in the face is the answer because that's otherwise we're, we're going to be prey. We're going to be right. railroaded. And it's counterintuitive to think, no, ground yourself in a world that's beautiful yeah. with people who love you and love yourself. And if you do this, it harmonizes you with the universe, with the bigger picture, with everything else that's going on. And um, you get out of making the same decisions because you don't feel so crazy because you're not reacting as much. You're not cutting people off and you're not looking for what's really going on underneath the surface. Because most people are so out of balance thinking that they're in balance because it feels normal instead of realizing there's a whole nother world that we can live in that personally, that it, it goes from, you know, a dark and stormy night to, and the sun came back out. It's right. that, it's, you know, it's that, and you know it in your own life. You've had some miracles lately happen. Yeah, it's you know? been really, yeah, it has been amazing. Yeah, we, everything got settled up yesterday and it was almost like, okay, so we got to this place where everything got settled. And then um, it was like, it was interesting. We were then working with our, um, our child's therapist. And, um, and it was funny to watch after we had just settled all this stuff, how things came up. And, you know, he's like, well, we kind of sucked at that one. I'm like, yeah, but it's already in the past, even though it was 10 minutes ago. I go, so who cares yeah. in the past? Yeah. And let's move it's on. already done. Yeah. And then we started throwing like, these funny uh, memes to back and forth. And it was just like, yeah. With really your ex? Are you yes. kidding me? Oh, see? Yeah, it was just kind of so like, you I'm plugging this. from it. I'm so glad. <laughs> Thank you. That is the hardest thing I have to do with women is to convince them that sincerely loving themselves, sincerely respecting themselves, and creating a nourishing environment for themselves is the only answer to get out of any mess we have. And, and if anyone doubts what Rita just said, um, send me a message because I'm living it. I am living exactly what she just said. And, and I remember you saying to me that the best thing that you can do is hold super strong boundaries for what's true for you. That's the most self-loving and self-caring for you and your kids and all will turn out. And I am now on the other side of that. Yes. And, and it was scary, wasn't it? It was terrifying. It was terrible because it was boundaries I had never held in 19 years of knowing this man. Yeah. And, and I held really strong boundaries and every single one of us is better off on the other side now. Yeah. Every single every one, one of you, of because you held a higher standard. You know, what's gotten me through really dark times is the I Ching. You know, when I would go through those same scary times that you went through, Yep. You know, where your world internally is ripping apart and, and you don't even know why you're so scared because logically you shouldn't be, but your right. body's behaving like you are hanging over the edge of a cliff. By well, and, and you're, you're right. Your body, this is the interesting, almost your muscle memory wants mm -hmm. to almost go back to that place of trauma of when things weren't mm -hmm. working well. Cause mm -hmm. I watched my body trigger and then I was just like, yeah, yeah, I don't care. Like I, I'm now to a point where it's like instantaneously, it'll trigger. I'll be like, yeah, you know, and, yeah. and he's just like, really, you're not mad. I'm like, no, I, I really don't care. I'm I like, really don't care. I go that it's already in the past. Five minutes ago is the past. He started laughing. He goes, mm -hmm. it's already in the past. It just happened. I'm like, yeah, it already just happened. I'm like, yeah. tomorrow is the only thing that matters. Like what we do right now and how we move forward. We both know yeah. we don't want to create what it was. Yeah. 
we both you do a want blanket to... forgiveness. You have to do a blanket forgiveness. Yeah, because that really, uh, you know, I learned a few years ago that forgiveness really is about shifting yourself. Mm -hmm. and when you forgive somebody else you know for the longest time I you know I'm, I got I'm stubborn I'm super oh, stubborn. oh yeah I get I am too <laughs> how do you think we both achieved this level of success despite our traumas right and and I just sat there going you know what it just it just doesn't matter anymore before I would have been like holding on to that you know we hold on to our suffering cycles like there's nobody's business well know? and people have done some horrific things to us yeah there yeah. are a lot of nasty people out there and they, and, and it's not that they're nasty people overall. It's just that they behave in a way, which is really very cruel, very emotionally cruel. None of us are glossing over the amount of pain and suffering that you've experienced. I've experienced. And sadly, the majority of women have experienced. And so we are not minimizing it whatsoever. We're saying well, you have to be courageous like a lion. Well, and step into your personal empowerment. Like it was mm -hmm. even interesting, like, you know, those of you who are familiar with the chakras, like it was really interesting that my third chakra, which is right above your belly button, when mm -hmm. I wasn't, when I don't stand in my power, that part of my stomach is completely pushed out because mm -hmm. I'm giving my power away. Like I'm my mm -hmm. physical body. But when mm -hmm. I'm standing in a place of empowerment, flat. It's yeah. really, really interesting to me. And yeah. as I started to pay attention at going, Oh, I'm not stepping in my power. How do I step in my yeah. power more? Then I would ask the questions. And then that's where the boundary we're holding would go into place yeah. and be stronger. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, we're all in a better place and mm -hmm. who knows what tomorrow will bring, you know, but all I know is that it's working right now. And, and it's, it's like building a muscle, Right. Mm -hmm. It's like once you take the step to have a little bit of courage to go to do something different, I'll just say mm -hmm. step in your power and do something different. That's the more self-loving and self-caring. The second time you do it, it's like riding a bike. The second time you do it, not as hard as the first time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then it starts to become a norm because somebody has to choose different behavior. Mm -hmm. And that's Otherwise, a different behavior. Be yeah. We have to, we have to choose a higher level of thinking. And that's why I always turn to the I Ching first. I've actually trained myself that if I've like you just immediately let it go, mm -hmm. me, I immediately pause and then I turn to something that I know I can trust as good wisdom. So right. the I Ching's been around for, I don't know, tens of thousands of years by now. Right. It's been polished. You know, it's got to be, yep. it's glossy. It, it's knowledge about how to live a successful good life and so whenever I don't know I turn to the I Ching and it brain it, it entrains my brain it entrains my thinking no this is the direction we're going this is what we're anchoring into this is right. what we believe and so then it gives you the strength and the courage to hold strong in loving someone without disrespecting yourself so true so and true. That's and that is key. not something that any of us learn from prior generations no, not from any prior generation. We are the latest technology of what it's like to be a human being. Yes, we are. And, and I'm learning that our children are even more to the higher level of technology. It's All really those indigo children. Remember when there was the big indigo children thing going around? Yeah. But that, it's, it's true. As in each generation is, is the higher order of thinking, is the latest technology. So... That's the thing that's gotten in many women's way, especially women who are successful, you know, in their 40s, 50s and 60s, you know, right now, they were never taught that there's another way to live life. They were mm -hmm. taught life is meant to be back and forth, sacrifice, suffering, trauma, totally. you know, the really good Catholic mentality of looking for martyrs, you know, and, and that's just not what the science is saying. Yep. It's, it's just not what anybody who knows what they're talking about is saying. They are all saying, we need to regulate our nervous system. We need to get on a higher order. And this is how you regulate your nervous system. But it's still well, in its infancy. It's, it hasn't gotten out enough yet. Right. Well, <clears throat> let's talk about some of the things that we were talking about earlier before we got mm -hmm. on about um, mm -hmm. being okay with it being okay. So we were talking about how you can create your physical environment at home to support regulating your nervous system that, and we were talking about how when we layer a couple different things at one time, 
how mm -hmm. that then creates a support system so that when you then go into these scenarios, um, like I, I just ran into, I, um, I, I went to uh, a shaman ceremony this weekend. And, oh, wonderful. Good. And uh, you, you'd laugh. I actually was kicked out because I was too much. <laughs> because you were too much in your goddess I, power. <laughs> I laughed because the shaman said, oh, when a woman's on her moon cycle, then um, they're too strong for the energy. So they can't actually sit in the circle, in the healing circle. We are like, very powerful. I, I think that he, yeah, <laughs> we are powerful though. Well, one of the things that I learned, so one of the gentlemen who was there actually said that he constantly plays the, um, if you, and you can go on YouTube, the um, 538 megahertz tone yeah. is of love. And so he yes. just has it playing in his house all I the do. time. I have them in my headphones. Yeah. And so talk to people about that, this layering stuff so that oh, they can yeah. create an environment yeah. at home. Yeah. I loved some yeah. of the ideas that you had. Oh yeah. Well, you know, uh, when I first started my career, I got into it because the only thing that would call me down, cause I was pretty high strong. The only thing that would call me down was when my husband would lay naked next to me and fall asleep for like an hour. I'd be like, you need to fall asleep. You need to be naked. And you need to not, you know, you need to not move. And then maybe I'll be interested in you. But if at nothing else, at least I'll feel calmer. And I wanted to know why. So, you know, X bazillion years ago, I used my spidey senses and my tarot cards and whatnot and found a great uh, school for massage therapy that focused on Asian medicine and metaphysics. Mm -hmm. And I started to understand the science behind right. why touch made us feel good. And then I started to be like, well, if I'm going to have a business, because there's, there's no way I was going to work for anybody else. Are you kidding me? I understand. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I have to make this work. Yeah. So, you know, I struck out on my own and, um, and I learned from the ground up, you know, literally of what makes people feel good. Mm. Why does it make them feel good? Mm -hmm. And how can we use it intentionally to create that feel good state because the feel good state is actually the healing state. Yeah, it's right. how we heal our trauma. It's how we work through our problems. So when people are relaxed, they naturally go into their intuitive higher self. They start using all of their brains, their head and heart mm -hmm. and gut brain. Everything's yeah. working. You're in harmony. So it became a mission of mine to not only create an environment that kept me in harmony, but would keep everybody else in harmony so that I'd be good at what I did, right. which was help women transform, right. you know? So it started with the touch. And then it, uh, after that, I went to music for a while. So I've got something like 30 different um, meditations out there. And this is a funny, a cute little story I like. I, you know, I'd be talking to people, my massage practice actually started be, and the coaching, my coaching part of my practice started because I didn't want to physically be in somebody's space unless I knew who they were and what was going on. I had to settle in. So I would, for my own, my own well-being, force people to talk to me for an hour before I'd give them a massage. <laughs> I feel so like, that made you, you feel know. more comfortable. Yes. I said, you need to sit here and talk to me and I don't care what we talk about, but I need to, get, we need to get in vibe. And, um, and then I saw, oh, wow, that's, that, that's really powerful. You know, just sitting and talking to people. It's vibration. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and allowing it to move. And then I was like, well, I never know how to start these things. Well, just offer them a cup of tea. So part of my ritual is someone comes and would you like a cup of tea? Let's sit down. Let's chat for, for a while. Let's yeah. talk before we do the body work. Right. And then I started to pull in all my shaman stuff, you know, drums <laughs> right. and herbs and smudging. Yep. And then I found out that I could write off my essential oils at, for tax. Per I could write them off because they were <laughs> expensive. I said, rock on and so I you know ended up diving deep into essential oils and then mm -hmm. you know I I met more people who were more visual and they started to help me with the colors and the backgrounds and bringing art into my life and studying 
you know, how we evolve Andy Warhol and the birth of punk and, and um, artists colonies and Mm -hmm. how we create those incubative states and transform and change. Right. And, and I realized that, you know, people were going, oh, I'm going to smell this essential oil and it'll make me feel better. Or, oh, I'll smell this essential oil and this will make me feel better. Well, it doesn't make me feel very good. So I'm just going to eat some more Fritos, you know? (laughs) So that's kind of what would happen. They wouldn't realize. Mine was reduced fat ruffles with beans, French onion dip. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, the essential oil didn't work. So yeah. I'm going to go back to my, you know, to my favorites. And the thing is, it's not that it didn't work. It's just that you're supposed to create a life. You're supposed to create an environment that nurtures you, not just a one off on a Tuesday every on your birthday. Right. It's supposed to be like you're living in an art museum. Yeah. You well, should and, be living and, in a and, spa. It's a really good point that you're making that it's about creating a lifestyle. So it's like, um, so as an example, so I want to bring more light to the world. So while we do these, I have candles going because I want to be a bright light in the world, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, and that they also have essential oils in them. So it brings a calmness Mm -hmm. because the energy then comes through to other people. And, you know, I learned, um, from the Chopra center back when I was doing a lot of Ayurvedic stuff that, um, that there are colors and you brought this up that there are colors. So when I was redoing my house five years ago, I was looking at, well, what is the energy and vibration behind what colors you put in what rooms? And so according to Ayurveda, there's three doshas, Pitta, Kapha, and Vata. And you're dominant. So if you have a lot of fire and you're like, fiery all the time. Like I have a pitta mind and I have a kapha body. And, um, which just means that I need things that are more soothing, but in the morning I need to be invigorated, you know? So Mm -hmm. it's like this, you know, balance Mm -hmm. between the two. So really good colors for my bedroom to sleep in are like a sage green Mm -hmm. or like a a beige. Like those are Mm -hmm. soothing colors for some, that's, Mm -hmm. I also know that's why I love to live by the water because the water is cooling, right? Mm -hmm. It's a cooling thing in my environment Mm -hmm. where some people need more, you know, invigoration. Like I have a friend who has like red walls in their house. I'm like, I'd be feisty as all get out. If I had Mm -hmm. red walls in my house, I'd be like, Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, but Mm -hmm. my son, my oldest, um, almost every color in his wardrobe is red, 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 red. And he's like chill, very calm. And he needs to, he needs more fire. He, so he's mm-hmm. like naturally choosing even clothes mm-hmm. that give colors and, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and, and, if, and if you're intrigued by that, um, you know, you can Google that kind of stuff. Like it's like, yep. Yep. what paint colors are good and they have questionnaires that you can yeah. take to. I just, you know, I just did that with, um, with a client of mine. She had two thirds of her liver removed from liver cancer and she's always been healthy and it came from a good home, but she's got all these liver problems that she's now struggling through. And I said, well, start researching, because she's a librarian. I said, start researching the oils that support liver function, Mm. the crystals that support liver function, the meditations that support liver Mm. function, the foods that support liver function, the right frequencies on YouTube. Yes, yes, the right frequencies on YouTube that support liver function. I said, because it's all out there. And if you layer them, you know, they seem like, yeah, how can a color heal my liver? You know, yes, but it synergizes with everything else that you're doing. It's in alignment. You're creating an environment that supports your well-being. I mean, Mm -hmm. like, like the candle that no one else can see but it calms you down in the scent. And in fact, I just got a, a subscription box for really good, rich wood scent. So I'll get them once a month for a year of a candle and, a, and an essential oil of a rich wood. But we have to stop, start nourishing ourselves with smells and colors and stop triggering ourselves. Remember when right. I told you to just to stop getting the alerts, stop right. getting the texts from your ex? Turn Stop off having it in your face. You know what? That was one of the best things that my boyfriend actually told me early on. He goes, you have to stop re-triggering your nervous system. He goes, yeah. turn, get, get the app off your software. So like I had at mm-hmm. one point 
shut off all text messages, blocked phone numbers, blocked e the emails went to a different folder because yep. it was like, it was literally like activating my nervous system yes. all over again yes. when I would be doing something. And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like just how my screen just went blurry for no freaking reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I look at signs and symbols a lot lately. I'm going with more with flows of things. So it's like, yeah, oh, that's interesting. right. Well, so it was really interesting that when I was creating space it, for my nervous system, it had nothing to do with anyone else but myself. Yeah. And it was creating space for my nervous system to detach from old patterning yeah. so that I could create new. And yeah. it was amazing on how I really, truly feel that that really helped because then I had a scheduled time that I went every 48 hours mm -hmm. to go look at anything I needed to look at, dealt mm -hmm. with it. But then for 48 hours, I was turned off mm -hmm. and it was creating new behaviors and new everything else, but it was still communicating. It was just doing it in a time frame that actually was healthy for me. Mm -hmm. to create the space so that I could shift mm -hmm. and all these things in our environment, like how many people go to bed with their phone still dinging and buzzing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, mm -hmm. I would challenge every one of you to stick your phone in a different room before you go to bed. Mm -hmm. What well, it's a mindset that needs to shift. I mean, and I think what happened yesterday for me is, is a good example. You know, I've been getting a little bit more popularity possibly because I've gotten a lot more clarity in how I think and, uh, and the message that I have. And because of that, it's really resonating with more women, which is good. Exactly. We need, we need, we must get this, this type of information out. Right. And so, um, you know, I was, uh, I was trying to figure out what to do with this board behind me, you know, cause I'm like, it doesn't quite look good and it doesn't look good on camera and I don't like how it looks and it doesn't look good to the people who are watching it. What am I going to do? And I was focused on what would the people out there like to see? And I was focused on what, what would the people out there be thinking of me? You know, what can I put up that right. will make them, them think of me well? And uh, yes, exactly. And it was- It has and nothing I had to do a, with anybody out and there. And I had a good friend that said, oh, you want to set it up to, you know, to- <laughs> influence people he says no you, you you set it up so that it's beautiful for you you set it up so that it means something to you whether anybody else sees it or well, not so what did I did is I put up my mom's quilt mm -hmm. and because everybody needs to see them as artwork because they're phenomenal you know and my Asian medicine uh silk painted banners right you know well and and I always what I always call that is you have to let your freak flag fly Mm -hmm. I have said that mm -hmm. for years. The problem is we don't own our authentic self. No, and, and we're scared to. We, we negotiate it away on a regular basis mm -hmm. because we're told to conform and to blend in and to like mm -hmm. every kid gets a trophy. I hate that. Hate it. Yeah, but we're surrounded by a lot of people who their go-to is to belittle and minimize and be sarcastic and pull yeah. people down. It has to be a conscious choice for each of us that we decide we're going to surround ourselves with people that are looking out for our best interests, not people who are, are frequently minimizing us. It doesn't make us stronger that we can put up with sarcasm. <laughs> it means that it, it, it doesn't prove anything. It means that you're just ripping yourself apart by having to defend yourself from somebody's criticism or constant belittling. Right. You know, you have to get support and advice from people who like you and love you and want what's best and aren't going to rip apart, you know, your idea of beauty. Right. Yeah. And so it's interesting. Somebody just uh, was very sarcastic with my daughter yesterday and she's like, mom, that was just so hurtful. Like, why would you do that? I was really excited about what we were talking about. And then, and then he was completely sarcastic with her and, and she just was like, and then she was in tears. And I was just like, well, you need to share that with that person. And you need to communicate that their sarcasm is actually very hurtful. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and if they love you enough, they'll shift it. And if they don't, then they won't. And then you just need to know whether you're going to continue to have conversations with that person or you're not. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know? it's respecting yourself and your right to show up in the world with what you want. And it's not selfish to have to nourish yourself. In fact, it's it's for the greater good. When right. we become the highest version of ourselves, because we're surrounded by beauty and art and friends and music and food we love and healthy things, we become the genius that we're supposed to be. Einstein isn't the only genius. Einstein just took his genius and he polished it until he could shine. And all of us have that, our unique self. And our job is to polish it so that we can do what we're supposed to do in the world, which right. is be smart and and understanding and come up with solutions for the myriad Absolutely. of problems that we have. That is so true. We need everybody to step up. Well, yeah, we need everyone to step up and step into exactly who they are. Yeah, exactly. Not 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 lean in. I really didn't like that whole lean in movement. You know, not <laughs> not not lean into it and work you didn't harder. Like, you're and, all up in your grill. <laughs> You know, not lean in. Instead, go. I'm closer to Timothy Leary. You know, yeah. what what did what did he say? Tune in, check out, something like that. Yeah. But it's the truth. But it's the truth. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And if you have to use teas or essential oils or shamanic medicines or herbal medicines or recreational pot or you know whatever you may choose to do some states mushrooms are legal now ayahuasca is legal in in illinois i believe yeah um january was you know, yeah stop stop i had a good friend who told me you have to use the to use it as a tool these things are tools to help us grow and if we use them as tools, then they're extremely powerful because they help us understand things and get more in harmony. But if we use them simply as recreation, it, it's a nice recreation, but it's not the most effective way to use it. The most effective way to use any herbal medicine is for our evolution. Well, and it's a fine line, right? Like, are you using it as a distraction to actually address what needs to be addressed mm -hmm. in your life? Mm -hmm. or are you using it as a tool to help get you to the next place? Yes, exactly. You know? And that's the difference. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. And, and you have to find what works for you. Like I know on transition day, when my kids come back to my house, the essential oils are going Mm -hmm. I make sure I'm giving them their really uh, strong uh, vitamins to boost their immune system up. Because I know mm -hmm. it can be stressful going back and forth mm -hmm. to the houses. I make sure I yeah. have music. Last night, um, they all love to sleep in my room. And, and I know it's because I play this. Uh, if anyone's ever heard of Tom Kenyon, he, he has an eight octave voice. And his, he channels what he chants mm. um, on the higher vibration of where humanity is going. Mm, nice. And my, my kids are like, mom, play that Tom music. Like they ask for it now because it regulates their nervous system so What's much. What's his name? Tom Kenyon. K-E-N-Y-O-N? K-E-N-Y-O-N. Okay. And... Um, his most recent one is called The Upper Rooms. He, he does one big recording like a year. I actually, when he taped The Upper Rooms, because I went and saw him in person last November in you Seattle. You did? Oh it my God. incredible. He did the taping live. So as he was channeling these sounds, like you look at the dude and you're like, how is that coming out of your mouth? Right, like, you right. Just, you know, it's, it's incredible what comes out of his voice. And what's interesting is how you yeah. vibrationally, so my body has become, so the upper rooms is the new one. Um, the one that my kids are super familiar with last year's, it was um, the multiverse. Oh, um, you know, multiverse is becoming a big word these days. That was the burning man thing. I'm using the word multiverse a lot. People yes. are realizing that there's a lot more going on than our tiny little amount of senses you yep. know, can ever recognize. Yep. And it's really interesting on in how, when you start to regulate your nervous system, particularly like with Tom Kenyon's music, yeah, that, yeah. um, 
like the minute the stuff goes on, you have muscle memory. So your body mm -hmm. remembers that state of calm and alignment. Mm -hmm. And so you go deeper and deeper and it's like, whoa. Like do you play like, yours practically yeah. constantly? I mean, do you, yeah. I play mine, my All entertainment time. music, um, practically constantly. All uh, the time. Constantly in my headphones, in my car driving to work. Uh, in the background of any anything I have going on. It's almost obsessive. I'm like, I should be listening to other music, but I'm it's like, really... no, we're just going to listen to the same thing yep. because it keeps me able to continue processing. It keeps me present. And that'll entrain your brain and it'll entrain my brain. And soon that'll just be, we won't my... need the music anymore because my... we'll, we just think that way. My kids will say to me in the car, like, oh, I didn't want you're to fall asleep, like that. mom. Will you not play this again? And I'm just like, y'all need to just chill out. We need, need to get to our chill. nervous system back in alignment. Yeah. And literally, and it's funny, my fieriest kid, she's nine. And she like, she's like, really again? And all of a sudden, like, she just melts. Like, yeah. but it goes back to like, she's almost addicted to the fire and scorching people, you know, mm -hmm. because that's been her defensive mechanism. But she too, like last night, she just laid in my bed and wouldn't get out of my bed. She's like, tonight's my night. Mm -hmm. And she just laid it. She knew the music was going to go on. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, right. and, and, and then what happens is they sleep. So you sleep so deep. Mm -hmm. And longer periods of time because you finally calmed your body enough down mm -hmm. to get the nourishing sleep that you actually are really, really starving for. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's really interesting to me um, how like these little things from the music to the essential oils to um, all these little pieces um, just really, really do help. Well, like before I go to bed, I mean, this, this is, you know, the, for me, this was the miracle cure was I started taking a CBD mint before I went to bed. Mm -hmm. uh, so not just all the other things that I was doing to sleep, but I started to take a CBD mint. So it was slow acting. It stayed in my system while I was sleeping it kept my nervous system, you know, calm, my system regulated while I was sleeping. I've started to have the best sleep of my life. And mm -hmm. all it took was a dumb little CBD mint, you know, or two, if I'm feeling particularly stressed. <laughs> you crazy girl. <laughs> I know, I know. And, and suddenly your digestion starts working better. You're absorbing more water. You're absorbing more nutrients. Now you're able to yeah. handle stressful situations better. You know, it's we really can't handle it. It's really amazing to me how so much of this brilliance from indigenous tribes and mm -hmm. Greg Braden talks about this a lot. Oh, he's a studying. His Greg book Braden. fell off my shelf the other day while I was doing my sex and sexuality thing. <laughs> it was weird. We were trying to come up with the topic. And suddenly the Tantra of sound and human by design, Greg Braden's human by design. Yeah. Came up. This is one of his latest. Yeah. So yes, he's, he's the, he's a mentor for me. Yep. It's okay. He, it's found. He... <laughs> yeah. I watched Greg for years. You know, oh, I, I met him yeah. back in 2007 and yeah. Um, he bridges science and spirituality is pretty much yeah. what it boils down to. And he's yeah. done so much work with indigenous tribes, you know, going mm -hmm. to Tibet and Peru and um, working with so many shamans and the Hopi Indians in Arizona. Like mm -hmm. this man mm -hmm. knows his stuff. And yeah. there are a lot of those old traditional um, yeah. methods that um, are really coming into, you know, more into the Western world because mm -hmm. they work. They work. They, these tribes have been doing it for 5,000 years. You know, what was the linchpin for me is, you know, when I, when the pandemic hit and even before that, I knew I needed to focus more on my coaching and I needed to get things out into the world in a bigger way. Cause I knew things that people needed to know. Right. And at the time when I started the coaching, I, I could help everybody else through touch and essential oils and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I was still having these last, Key pieces in me that were reacting mm -hmm. and traumatized. And so I went on a search to find out, um, 
you know, how I could help myself. And that's how I ended up with Havening and the TAT points that we do and the pointy thing where you spin around three and a half times. And I, it, that was a game changer for me. And then I started to connect it with all of my shamanic work right. and understand why those things were, what was happening. Oh, this is flipping my nervous system. Oh, this right. is regulating exactly. my brain. Oh, this is getting my brain and my, and my heart brain and my gut brain working together. Oh, okay. And then once I started to make that connection as to what was really happening on a physical level, I started to realize that all of those ceremonies and all of the essential oils and all of the, it was timing. I was waiting too long and I didn't keep them as regular practices in my life. They were one off. You know, you just get help when you're in crisis. You just get help when it's so bad that you have to, your ego has to finally give up and say enough. That's exactly what it is. It's the ego giving up. Like I remember going into, so my boyfriend's house, when he, when you walk in there, it's like, you instantly just chill because he yeah. constantly is creating a chill environment from incenses to oils to, yep. you know, my space always, too. People are the right. same way. And, and I, if my house looks like it's straight out of a pottery barn magazine. And I was like, I was like, Oh, I'm like, yeah, I suppose I could burn incense. He goes, well, you really like it. Why don't you do it in your own house? I'm like, well, like, I don't want to like, get all this smoke in my house. Like, it was really funny. Like the hangups that yes, I had, the you know, and hang I was just like, that we have, I was so hung up. He's like, well, when you have a pottery barn looking house, you don't really see them burning incense now, do you, you know, <laughs> but I had to get over my perfectionist. Piece you had to myself. get over yourself. And what right. I really learned is I have a rule and it's just, it's a rule. I don't even question it anymore. I've proven it. I've tested it. I've thrown it against the wall. I've put it through the meat grinder. I've <laughs> suffered with it. I've, I've obsessed about it. I've studied the gurus around it. And it's come down to this one rule. What's that? Whenever I feel uncomfortable, I need to pause and I need to do something anything to regulate my nervous system. Mm. If it's ceremony, if it's a candle, if it's taking a right. mushroom, if it's doing CBD, if it's going for a walk. Yep. Only after I have got my brain out of the crazy fight flight state yep. and into the harmonized full whole human state yep. will I then take the next step. It's almost like reading a book. When I'm reading a book and I get to a place that makes me think, or I don't quite understand, I will put a bookmark in and I'll stop and I'll wait yep. until I understand what's going on naturally. And then I'll continue with the book. And that's what's happening in our brain and nervous system. When something Ooh. happens to us that we don't understand, our body puts a bookmark in it. And until we tell our bodies that it's safe enough to go back and reread that chapter, right? it's going to keep keep us in that state of trauma that we were in when it originally happened. It's, it's like watching the same scary movie every Halloween over and, and it still and scares again. you. Instead, yep. I say, I want to choose what scares me. I don't want to be, have random texts or emails or news or anything come up and scare me anymore. Right. So instead when I'm scared and I don't want to be, then I'm going to go for a walk. Right. Yeah, I'm going to nature cook will dinner. regulate you too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, guaranteed. The it's vibration so coming off the earth is way more powerful than your, you know, personal little right. humanoid experience. Right. Exactly. So if nothing else, put on the brainwave entrainment music, go for a walk and then decide what you're going to do next. And if you can't, because you're in the middle of some knockdown fight and someone, you know, uh, regulate do whatever you have to do yeah, to regulate your havening and everything else mm -hmm. right whatever go to the bathroom regulate Michael hide behind the refrigerator door hi somebody wants hi, to Michael. join us today good this is my little guy michael everybody hi, Michael. <laughs> we have remote schooling today <laughs> uh, challenge for everybody yeah. what a wonderful opportunity for family time it really is there are so many gifts of what's going on these days yeah. and it's so yeah, true is. Mm -hmm. Sweetheart, give me one minute. So, um, so Rita, how do people get a hold of you? Well, you know, the best way right now is to go onto Facebook and type in Rita Aiken Hickman, um, and 
pick one of the multiple places I'm on Facebook and like or be alerted to my live stream. Because if someone wants to make a real change in their life, all they really need to do is watch the daily live streams or the, or the podcast or things that I do. All the information's out there. And I do them five days a week. And many times, you know, uh, I'll have two or three during a day just because I'm collaborating with so many people or, right. or have important things that need to be shared. Yep. So, um, and so find me on Facebook, start liking and being alerted when I do live streams, give yourself the gift of listening to really hard won wisdom that will get you thinking and, and entrained and in harmony to the right direction. You don't even have to do anything. You just have to listen exactly. and it'll start to entrain you. You don't even have to be a guru. Just be as screwed up as you are and just show <laughs> be up and listen. the perfect version it. that you are today to do what you're yep. meant to do next. <laughs> yep. Yep. So that's the, that's the best way to find me. Um, and my website's inspiremassage.com right now. Soon it's going to be ritahickmancoaching.com because I'm evolving. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And everyone, don't forget, um, I am going to be giving away a free copy of my book. So if you go to juliemurphy.com and just sign up on my email list, you'll be alerted when that's happening um, because it's time for our world to financially heal. It's time for us to stop acting out um, our money stuff by creating all this debt and uh, lack of freedom in our lives. And so um, I want to give my gift of my book to the world and to help everybody on their journey so we can focus on what's right in the world as opposed to what's wrong, because it is time to shift it. We don't need to be looking this direction anymore. Let's just move to the place that's in alignment with our hearts and our souls and get busy doing it day after day because we're worth it. Mm -hmm. And the world needs us to be regulated. It needs us to be in that higher form of ourself because no one else is doing this stuff and they're all traumatized and punching each other in the face and they think it's oh, okay. Oh, the projection's terrible. Just mm -hmm. look at anything going on political right now. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah, it's hard, to, it's, it's hard to ignore that because totally. it's right in our face right now with the right. election coming up and, you know, the tensions are rising. I'm even worried, you know, my husband's, warning me you know my friends are warning me they're saying you know what maybe you don't want to vote on election day maybe you just want to stay home to avoid anything that could go wrong you know or they're saying if if you are going to go out you know keep an open mind as to what sorts of things might people people might be doing to you know either protest or or express their feelings act out what's going on right. i mean so the level the level of tension is at least to the point where it's re it's restricting the people who love me want me to restrict myself to my home so that I can avoid harm. More people are buying guns, even though they've never been armed before. They don't know what they're doing. Right. Um, you know, it's not like they have ethical safety thoughts around it or, or know what's smart or, you know, it's not like there's familiarity. That's so true. So there's, this is a really hard time. And if people think that they, don't have the luxury, you know, they don't have the luxury to be a stabilizing, harmonizing influence in the world. Um, they're just, you're, you're screwing yourself. We got to help everybody right now because, and the way we do it is by taking care of ourselves so that we can be grounded and right. not react with fear and anxiety, but instead help make a situation better instead of worse. Right. Yeah, I totally agree. Well, thank you for another session of Awaken Our Relationships. Thanks. And I look forward to everyone joining us again next week. And um, much love to everybody out there because let's just spread all the good vibes. <laughs> yep, I agree. Sniff, Thanks, sniff, sniff, everybody. sniff some chamomile and lavender. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a deal to me. It's one of my favorite Excellent. teas. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Okay. Bye.